Good morning. Welcome to uh, Lady Bird Johnson's Pollinator Garden. We are here at Lady Bird Johnson Park in Fredericksburg. This is a garden that is maintained and um, established and maintained by the Friends of Fredericksburg Nature Center and Texas Master Naturalist. We do um, all of the maintenance here on Tuesday mornings. Normally, we have a big group that's in here working, but most people, since it's August, are on vacation. So we started, this was, um, the city asked us if we would take over this property. It was an experimental rose garden that was abandoned and everything had died. Project of Texas Master Naturalist, Friends of Fredericksburg Nature Center, and most of us are also members of the Native Plant Society of Texas, where, you know, we learn about all of our native plants and things that we should be doing. So, this was an experimental rose garden at one time, and the city asked us if we would take over the garden. Um, the roses had been abandoned and they had mostly died. There were three roses left in the garden and we left those because they were large, they were established and they were heirloom roses. And we went from there and started with bare dirt. We put in all of the beds, brought in dirt, brought in rocks, built all the fencing. Uh, we put in our little dry creek bed here because when it rains, the water comes through here and we were having a lot of erosion problems. So we built the dry creek bed and one of our members built a wonderful little bridge that we love. We put in, um, this is a cross vine, which actually I just saw some bloom up here. Actually blooming in August, which is very unusual. It is a beautiful spring bloomer. We put it in because it does stay pretty much evergreen all year. It is a native to Texas, which was important to us. It doesn't migrate. It doesn't spread and become invasive like so many of the vines do. And so that was also important to us to have a plant that um, would stay where we put it. So here's the blooms. The hummingbirds and the bees love, love, love these blooms. And again, it's very unusual for them to be blooming in August, but we've had a wonderful summer so far with lots of rain. She's been a gift. Uh, one of the things that we wanted to include in the garden were some of the native grasses. Uh, there are several butterflies that use the grasses as a host plant, and so we wanted to make sure that we included those give all kinds of butterflies some place to make home. This is the center, which is starting to bloom. Lovely yellow, and you can see the bee is quite happy with the blooms this morning. In the back, uh, this tree right here, this is a Mexican plum. It's making its little plums now, but it's one of the very first trees to start blooming in the springtime. So when you get the, the spring migrating butterflies and birds, uh, this is a good nectar provider for the spring migrators. And behind it, all of this tall stuff is the Maximilian sunflowers which is a fall bloomer. We try to have things here in the garden that bloom for every season. And so these will be starting to bloom in the next month or so. And they are important for the fall migrating butterflies and birds. We 
We have uh, lots of mealy blue sage. We have more now than we started with because it, it does migrate. It has, it has moved over here. And down underneath all of this is one of our milkweeds, which has some little blooms. And this is the tuberosa milkweed. We have five different milkweeds in this garden. We are a monarch way station. And so milkweeds are an important element that we keep here. I noticed the Yerba de Zazotes is senesced. So it's not there <laughs> to show you, but normally I have Yerba in here. We have the Turk's cap. The hummingbirds love, 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 of course. They love to come to, to the Turk's cap. That's one of their favorites. So the majority of the plants that we put in are native plants, but there are a couple, um, like this germander. Cut leaf germander is not necessarily um, one of the natives. The same thing with the uh, legend sage, which we put in because it is a good summer bloomer. And as you can see, we have lots and lots and lots of butterflies this morning. Okay, so this is uh, the horse mint. Uh, it's also called bee balm. It's kind of at the end of its stage. Normally, it's this real pretty purple bloom. But we do let things go to seed in here so that we will have seeds for next year. So we'll cut this and we'll scatter the seeds farther into the garden. Um, and then so we'll have those again next year. That's how we get a lot of our seeds is we, we collect seeds here. We collect seeds on the highway. We, we, uh, spread seeds here. We have the meadow. We have, uh, nature trails. And so we do a lot of seed gleaning here and, uh, and spreading seeds throughout the park. This is a thoroughwort. It kind of, the thoroughworts kind of got hurt with the cold that we had this year. But it's another wonderful fall bloomer. Um, in October, I think we counted 58 different species of butterfly in this garden because this plant was so prolific and so pretty. And it's, it's a butterfly magnet, absolutely a butterfly magnet. And it has real pretty white blooms in the fall. Okay, this plant, this plant with the red bloom, this is a salvia darcy. It is, comes out of Mexico. It freezes back every year, but it does come back. And it's another one that the hummingbirds and the butterflies really love. They love those red tubular blooms. There's more bee balm. Okay, so one of the things that we wanted to do is make this garden educational. And so we put in, it's a little mini grain water harvesting, harvesting system. We collect off of this little tiny root. So we don't collect a whole lot of water, but it's mostly for an educational bit, uh, project just to show people what they can and should be doing is collecting rain water. Uh, we just use this as a little wet area. We have the frog fruit, which a lot of the butterflies are attracted to the frog fruit. 
the day flowers that have been coming up this year. And also in here we have the big red sage, which was, uh, it was thought to be extinct. And Bill Ward happened to find some plants down close to the Cibolo Nature Center. And so that plant was one that was rescued and has been propagated and it's, it's kind of making a comeback in people's gardens. People who know put it in their garden. So if you have an opportunity to get some big red sage, you should put that in your garden. So this is another one of our tuberosa milkweeds. These are the seed pods. So this one has bloomed and has gone to seed. And those are his pods. We usually collect the seeds and um, take them to one of the local nurseries, the native plant nurseries, to propagate. Or I do a lot of propagating at home, try to spread those around. And get those going too. This is tropical sage. It's a, another good summer garden plant. Um, they bloom all summer. They're they're bright and cheery. Things that people like. So that's another one that the butterflies, the bumblebees, the hummingbirds are attracted to. seed pod and here's the seeds and this is the tuberosa milkweed so this pod has opened and released seeds okay and then we put in the uh, Lindheimer morning glory which is a beautiful little flower. It's a real pretty vine. Beautiful flower. They're open in the morning because that's it's morning glory. Our little trees we put in are possum haw. They'll have a real pretty red berry in the winter time. So that's a, one that the birds are attracted to. We get those to come in with the possum haw. We have the uh, native lantana in here. We went with the Texas native because we want to keep it as native as possible. Now we have discovered that these do spread here in the garden. And so this winter we're going to have some digging to do to get some of these things out of here. But that's, we'll take them to another garden and plant them there. So it works. This is the cowpin daisy and it is the host plant for the border patch butterfly. Uh, there should be some caterpillars in here. Well, actually here's a caterpillar. This is the caterpillar for the gulf fritillary. This one. He likes the passion vine. So that's the Gulf Fritillary caterpillar. This is a bud on the passion flower. It's not open yet. 
that they make a beautiful bloom, of course. Then the cowpen daisies. Now we deadhead in, in the garden. We deadhead the cowpen because it is a prolific um, spreader. It does make lots and lots and lots and lots of seeds, which is more than we can handle in this one little enclosed garden. But it's another one of the seeds we collect and we share the wealth with other parts of the park. These are all mallows. Mallows are also one of the host plants. Uh, we had some crazy caterpillars on here this year that were blue. And they were from our song fly. Of course, now I can't find any when you want one, right? <laughs> Uh, but this is the little mallow. Uh, these are asters. They will be blooming in the fall. They're not quite ready to bloom yet. Here's one of our, um, here's uh, one of our border patch butterflies. So that is the butterfly that posts on the cowpin daisy. This is the Texas lantana. Oh, this is the Texas green eye down in here. This is another one of the, the plants that's a real pretty summer bloomer. We have... Um, we have agarita. It gets kind of covered up in the summertime, but we do have agarita for uh, spring blooms. It's another one of the ones that is one of the very first summer bloomers. So we, we have that in here. Um, down in here, this little stuff that looks like fern is actually yarrow. It has already bloomed this year, and we've cut all of the blooms out already. And so this is a plant that looks like this little fern. And this is our rosin leaf. And it blooms like this all summer. I do keep this one deadheaded also. I cut the dead blooms out. And as long as I do that, it will continue to bloom and bloom and bloom. So that's one of the things that's important to do in the garden is deadheading. Oh, here's um, caterpillars. This is the border patch caterpillars. And you'll find them clustered together like that. And eventually they'll go spread out and find their own leaf. But they do get clustered up together. But they make a pretty butterfly, so it's all good. We did plant zinnias in here because butterflies want a flower that's flat that they can land on top of and nectar. And so they love the zinnias. So we keep them back in this little corner of the garden. I'll plant them just for our butterflies. Okay, down here, this is another one of our milkweeds, actually. So this one is one that's actually very rare. It's only endemic to the Texas Hill Country. It is a prairie milk vine. And uh, we actually found it. Here's the bloom. Here's the bloom. We actually found it because... I got the park guys to stop mowing the meadow. <laughs> so we found it out in the meadow, propagated it, and transferred it here into the garden. So this is a very rare, endemic, only to the hill country milkweed. This is prairie verbena. 
it's one that just it, it's a volunteer that came up but they're also one of the plants that the butterflies really like and they're pretty so it gets to stay and then over here this is the antelope horn milkweed here and it's going to bloom again which is very unusual also it's very unusual this year this year for the plants and the butterflies this is texas star and it's going it's uh, usually a spring into summer and so it is definitely going by but this is a texas star it's the chapter flower for the hill country Master Naturalist chapter. <laughs> Those are the seeds. There are some new cone flowers. I put new cone flowers in here, which I'm going to have to uh, rescue from everything else that's come up. Uh, we do use, we have to use some caging every once in a while because even though this is a city park, we're far enough out in the country that we do get deer that like to come in here and have dinner while we're gone. So this plant is uh, almond verbena. It is not necessarily a native, but it has a beautiful uh, fragrance. It blooms during the summertime. Uh, butterflies, it's another one that the butterflies like to go to. So it's one that we put in. Okay, so that is uh, the little ground cover. It's called straggler daisy. It's one of those plants that you either love it or you hate it, depending on um, your version of the world. But it does come up when, whenever we clear. We try to clear the Bermuda grass and things out. Then the straggler daisy comes up, which it's okay. It's a little, it's another little flower. And the day flowers are, of course, just a beautiful blue. Uh, that is one of the little native bindweeds, uh, little native morning glory. Has the little purple blooms on it. Very common in everybody's yard and garden. This is um, a, one of the crotons that comes up here. This is a woolly croton. And the crotons are another butterfly host plant. We leave some, we don't leave them all because we would be covered up with croton if we left them all. But we do leave some for the butterflies to enjoy. This is another one of our cross vines. And then one of our, the man who built our bridge also built us our Aldo Leopold bench, which we thought we just, you just have to have one in your garden. And so he built us a bench for the garden. Okay, this little tree here is kidneywood, which is a native tree. Um, it does bloom in the summer. It is another one that's very attractive, as you can see, to the bees 
and the butterflies. They all come into it. They like it. Okay, this is a common sunflower. They're uh, just one of the little native sunflowers. You'll see them on, mostly on the side of the highway or out in someone's field. We do keep a few in here. The, the wrens like to nest in here. They'll come in here and get seeds, the little um, finches like to come in here and get the seed and uh, so we leave a few not all of them but we do leave a few uh, this is our coral honeysuckle and it's kind of struggling after the cold and the freeze but it is still here it did survive um so that's and you can see there's a hummingbird right there so it's one that the hummingbirds really love And also this year I put in down here at the base, another one trying to come along. I put in a Texas honey uh, Texas honeysuckle this year. So these are blooming early, 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 like in February. These were blooming at my house. Um, it's another really good spring bloomer. This one's not getting as much sunshine as it would like because of this lantana. So it's an, this is more the pruning and things that we have to do in this garden so that everybody has a chance to survive. And that's just, again, the Texas lantana. This is a rose of Pavonia. So it has a beautiful little pink blue. Texas green eye, a lantana. Of course, you cannot have a butterfly garden without having some of the Greg's blue mist flower. And as you can see, the butterflies are very attracted to this particular plant. And we get hundreds and hundreds of them in here in the summertime. Just fun. It's fun for people to come in. They get to see all the butterflies and the kids get really excited when all the butterflies fly up. We have still had monarchs and they're still here.
they're not migrating for whatever reason. And my guess is because it's been so much cooler and wetter this summer that they are not migrating. Okay, so another one of the milkweeds that we have brought in for this garden is the pearl milkweed vine. That's this little bloom, and you can see the little dot in the middle of the flower. In the sunshine, it just turns an iridescent, beautiful little pearl. And then down below is his seed pod that is com coming on. It's not ready yet. It has to turn brown before it'll be ready to collect that. So when you're collecting, you're gleaning seeds, you have got to let them mature and ripen and basically turn brown before you collect them because if not, they will not be viable and you have wasted a whole lot of your time and a whole lot of seeds that otherwise you could use in your garden. We just wanted something to grow on here to create shade. We also, in the garden, we have uh, it's one of the clematis. It's a purple leather flower. To me, they look like little fairy hats. Um, but they bloom all during the summer. We planted it here just because we wanted shade for our visitors who like to come and sit here, enjoy the breeze, and enjoy the butterflies. And then they make these crazy little alien looking seed pods, which are wild. Again, you have to let them turn brown before you collect them, because otherwise they won't be ready. But if you get your hands on some of these seeds, they're very easy to propagate, and you can have those at your house too. This is a Gilbriar Productions video by me, Paula Stone.